Thanks for tuning in. Uh, welcome to another Budget Wargaming episode. Uh, I'm your host, Alan Westcote, and I'm here to talk more about Gamma Wolves and building a very cheap Gamma Wolf set. Uh, one of the things about Gamma Wolves is a whole lot of it is left up to the players, and while the book contains some pilot cards and contains some mech cards, I felt that all of it left a lot to be desired, and certainly even the author, Ash Barker, uh, figured that the community would get together and devise their own things. And so I wanted to break it down for convenience. One of the things that I opted for was to go for a more modern card style design uh, where you could build up your mecha using uh, cards of various sizes and then put them on a character sheet. So your character is on a single sheet of either A4 or letter sized paper and then underneath the character are spaces for you to place the cards so that you can simply build your mech on it. Here is the character sheet that I designed. Um, has room for pilot name and arcology. Everything that you would find on the regular character sheet is up top. Um, underneath then you'll find the area for the frame and its various loadouts. The first thing you do when you're building a mech in the game is to choose a frame. So I have these frame cards here. Uh, I chose yellow for light. I chose blue for medium. And I chose red for the heavy mechs. So they're color coded that way. And their loadouts also are color coded. The loadouts are in the mini card size and uh, the uh, mecha cards are in the standard card size of 63 by 88 millimeters, and these cards I made uh, 44 by 63 millimeters. These cards were laminated, so they are plastic coated, uh, suitable for use with dry erase markers. There are various things that can simply be ticked off during the course of a game, uh, reactor, sensors, uh, body damage, those are all here on the card. You'll also notice I have some arrows and those point either to propulsion or to various loadouts. So I can very simply make a mark. Let's say I stress my reactor. I'll just put a mark there and later on, if I want to remove that mark, I can simply easily erase it. So these are very readily reusable cards. And uh, the arrows point out Things. So, of course, the first thing you choose is propulsion, and then you choose your loadouts to go on your hard points. So, I decided I'll go with the free bipedal right here. Uh, I figured that on my medium frame left primary hard point, and there's an arrow pointing to it right here, I would put a medium laser. And then I'm thinking of the very fantastic idea of having a sword and a shield or in this case, a thermal spear uh, and a shield. The thermal spear is allowed on the secondary hard point. Another thing that I did on these small cards was to include uh, small boxes for marking damage. So what we have here are six circles for checking things off. Uh, if it's on a primary hard point, then it will get six damage. And if it's on a secondary hard point, that last one is grayed out. And that one does not count on the secondary hard point. And of course, I'm going to put this here on the secondary hard point with the shield, the fantasy idea of a shield, the ballistic shield will go right here. And you can see for the shield, it gets a barrier value of eight. So I put eight extra circles on this in addition 
to the six circles it's going to get for being a primary hard point. So that takes care of my mech, my propulsion, uh, and all of my uh, hard points here. And then, of course, I only had a little bit of space left over for the technical loadouts. And uh, I wanted to have a chaff launcher, so I put that on there. And notice I added an ability called uses because it's a single-use item. And I'll just put that here. And I decided I wanted to add some heat sinks because I'm adding a lot of heat with this laser. So I just put that uh, on here and you can stack them. Another feature of these cards is that I have included the materiel value on the bottom right hand corner. Uh, I chose to use the capital letter M with a double strike through as kind of a money type symbol. And you can quickly add up the values for all of them. And then uh, a very last feature is this box right here is designed for you to pencil in your total weight load and your total materiel value. So in this case, eight plus six is 14, plus six is 20. Uh, I have one weight for the chaff launcher, so that's 21. And also I should point out, I simply wrote X3, three heat sinks on here. So that adds three more weight for a total of 24. And I can just put that right here. For the total materiel, 45 plus 25 is 70, plus 30 is 100, 0 for the bipedal propulsion, and then 30 for the heat sinks and 10 for the chaff launcher to give me a total of 140 materiel. And I can just pencil that in right there. One advantage of using a card system like this that I wanted to point out before I go is that it's really a good way to randomize loot. So if you wanted to have weapon systems available as um, things that you picked up uh, or found objective markers and things like that, you can simply shuffle up some cards and then the players can draw from that. The limit on the cards that you've actually printed for use can actually represent limitations in the game world where maybe you want to put an auto cannon, but you just don't have one. Or maybe you only have a light auto cannon when you want to put it on a medium mech and you simply can't because you don't have an auto cannon designed to be equipped to a medium mech. So the actual cards themselves are great for representing real world limitations and that's a feature that a person could use. Happy gaming. Thanks for tuning in.